we start, Jeff, with Inner Miami, okay, who of course set a new MLS single season uh, points record, 74 points on the year after a 6 2 victory of the uh, New England Revolution on Saturday. Messi had a hat trick coming in off the bench. Luis Suarez uh, had a brace. Both of those guys, by the way, finishing the regular season with 20 goals apiece. There is plenty, Jeff, to pick from here, but what to you is most impressive about what Inter Miami was able to pull off in this regular season? Well, for me, what the most impressive thing that they were able to pull off was to keep winning when Lionel Messi wasn't there. Um, you know, the, the team hardly skipped a beat, you know, when he was absent. I mean, you know, heading into the season, you know, myself included and, and plenty of other pundits said, well, Miami's got to stay healthy, you know, if they're going to make a run at, at the Supporter Shield and MLS Cup. And certainly they, they had their share of injuries. You know, they, they had their share of hiccups in, in terms of available personnel. But, uh, you know, credit to Tata Martino and, and the rest of the, the squad. You know, they were able to keep ticking over. They were able to keep winning. And as a consequence, they're able to get that record for, for most points in, in our MLS regular season. And now I think they're, they're really well positioned and, and full of confidence and, and in good form heading into the MLS Cup playoffs. Herc, I've admitted it. I got one thing wrong with Inter Miami, and that was Tata Martino. I thought if they were going to have something that they would, they would be a letdown here for this team, it would be what happened when, to Jeff's point, when Messi and Suarez and all the cheat codes left. Tata Martino might be exposed as a manager. I, I got that wrong. He did not get exposed. If anything, he showed us just how good of a manager he is at the MLS level. But if anybody in this show didn't believe that Inter Miami was going to dominate at least the regular season, Herc, it was you. Yeah, absolutely. For the reasons that Jeff just outlined. When you've got arguably the world's greatest ever player and you know that given his history and given his resume, or regimen, I should say, of wanting to play every single game he can for club and country, at some point in time, he's going to get hurt. He's going to get injured, so he's not going to be available. And he not being available, well, a team that's built around him, they're going to suffer, and they didn't. Now, they didn't suffer in the way that maybe back in the day Landon Donovan left the LA Galaxy and the Galaxy would, you know, not suffer. They didn't suffer in the way that Chris Wondolowski would. No, never mind. They would suffer either hmm. way. Uh, they would suffer in different ways here. You know, they didn't happen with this Inter Miami. You've got players like Luis Suarez. You've got players like Diego Gomez. You've got players like Jordi Alba. You've got plenty of other players, good professionals, to steady the ship. But Tata Martino is the man behind all this. Hmm. And I've said this before. We keep looking at those Atlanta United years, the great years they had, as if it was some great front office experiment. Maybe it was Tata Martino all along. Do not forget it was Kenwin Jones, the first ever DP for Atlanta United. In comes Tata Martino and he goes, eh, I, I can't play with this type of striker. He starts bringing in the players he wants. Miguel Almiron, all these other players. He makes that team play the way he wants. This Miami team is playing the way he wants with a very special player. That player leaves, they're just as effective. So yes, throw them their flowers. They did a great job. I, I don't care if uh, and it's, they cheated last year, I believe, or two years ago, mm -hmm. and they got caught for it. They pay the consequences, but they're constantly trying to push the envelope. They're trying to make their team better, the league better. They're trying to grow this organically the way that other teams grow it organically, which is spending money on players. They tried it. so. I think it's great for Tata Martino. He proves his worth, and I know you threw a little jab in there. In MLS, as if, because he didn't do well with the Mexican National League, that proves that he's not a good coach. Mm -hmm. How many coaches did not do uh, well with the Mexican National Team? But this is his playground. He knows the league yep. very well, and for a guy that's not from it, that's yep. you know, pretty, pretty uh, impressive. I'll give him his flowers. I'll give him his flowers, not just for coaching up huh? to, to what you mentioned. It's the front office work that this guy does. Like, he, he always is able to bring in players that I don't think would be attracted to Major League Soccer. Of course, you know, in Atlanta, he didn't have Messi to help him recruit. Messi helps <laughs> in inner Miami. Miami is a great place to go. But he's gotten a lot of players that I don't otherwise think would have looked at either inner Miami or Major League Soccer um, as their next project. Jeff, when I think of this inner Miami team, it's kind of like this is the one place in sports where you've got a team that has found a way to, to have their cake and eat it too. You really, truly believe that when these guys weren't around – they would drop off. That didn't happen. And this game is kind of the perfect example of that. Like, going into this game, 
you figure Messi's coming in off, what, 180 minutes in the international window. Um, you do want that points record. Everybody wants a points record. But they decided to rest him. You know, they, they said, we have enough to pummel the New England Revolution without Messi. And so now what do they have? They got their points record. They got their cake. And they're going to eat it, too, because they're going to go into the postseason with these guys pretty fresh. They haven't really had to rely on Messi and, to a lesser extent, Suarez. So my question to you, Jeff, is this. Herc has been pretty strong, and I think I agree with him here, that absent of an MLS Cup, none of this means anything, right? You're the Golden State Warriors with 73 wins. If you don't finish it off, um, nobody cares. We're still going to remember the 72-win Chicago Bulls is the greatest of all time. If Inter-Miami is going to be the greatest of all time, do they have to finish it off with an MLS Cup, in your opinion? Absolutely. Um, you know, as, as rewarding a trophy as the Supporter Shield is, let's not forget, they don't play a balanced schedule. I mean, this, this is a, a heavily weighted schedule by conference. Uh, you know, they're not having to, to go all, all the way across the country, you know, to, to, to San Jose or, or wherever. And so, uh, and, and really, you know, for many years, winning the Supporter Shield was almost a curse. Um, you know, teams that, that won the Supporter Shield fell short more often than not. So, uh, you know, granted, you had 2017 Toronto FC, you had LEFC a couple of years ago. You know, they were able to do the double, the treble in Toronto's case. And that's why those teams are remembered as some of the greatest of all time in MLS. So, uh, absolutely, Inter Miami needs to win MLS Cup. Uh, I think the, the road to that is, is laid out perfectly for them. Uh, you know, they might, they'll have to leave home for, for one game in that best of three round. Uh, but otherwise, you know, they're, they're going to be staying in South Florida the entire, uh, you know, for the duration of the playoffs. So uh, they've got all the advantages. They're healthy. Uh, you know, they, they're, you know, peaking at the right moments. Uh, you know, getting back to Tata Martino, I mean, he's a guy that knows this league. Uh, he likes the league. He he knows how to to find success in this league, and so I think he's got his players absolutely primed for a, a run to MLS Cup. But they have to win it. I mean, otherwise, th this team is is not going to be remembered as one of the best. Ah, enough praise for Tata Martino. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. What Herc? What I'm just saying. If they do win it, uh, it's hands down the best team in Major League Soccer right. history. Right. By the way they played, how dominant they were, the show that they put on with the greatest showman on earth, that is Lionel Messi. This is a team that's one of the most dominant teams I've seen in Major League Soccer. If they don't win it, to me, it's still 2017, that trouble, uh, the, the Toronto FC team. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that made them so dominant, and, and it wasn't even in that year, was their collective play because the big Giovinco year was 2016. Well, now they have individual, just ridiculous years from different players, whether it's Luis Suarez, uh, Lionel Messi was only there half the time, Busquets, the list goes on and on. They were a show and a sight to be seen. So if they do win it, it it's hands down, no questions asked. Uh, quickly, can we focus in on Messi just a little bit more here? Because the final numbers, Jeff, are, are just staggering. 20 goals, 16 assists in 19 uh, league games played. Obviously, he's the best of all time. But he is 37 years old. Um, is there any room for surprise here? And if not, Jeff, um, is there any indictment here on either the defenders of this league or the league as a whole that guys like Messi and, to a lesser extent, I guess Suarez could come over here and, and overwhelm everybody um, at their age? I don't think so, for the simple reason that, that Suarez and Messi have been doing this to opponents for, for well over a decade. Um, you know, you've got a situation where, you know, I think Messi, did he score over 50 goals one year when he was with Barcelona? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, I mean, listen, he's been lighting opposition defenses up, you know, for, for <coughs> year after year after year. Uh, so I don't think it's necessarily an indictment. Um, certainly, the, the league could spend more on defenders. I mean, they, they could certainly invest in, in better defenders, but obviously it's goal scorers that put people in the seats. Uh, Messi has certainly put plenty of people in the seats, not only in South Florida, but, uh, you know, throughout the league. And so uh, I don't necessarily look at it as an indictment. Yes, they're, they're at the end of their careers, both Messi and Suarez, but they're talented players. Everyone knows that. And so, I, you know, I don't think it's, it's necessarily a reason to look down on MLS because, I mean, Messi has just been doing this, you know, to year after year you know, scored just loads of goals. So, uh, you know, this is really more of the same. This isn't really anything new. Well, 
where I will disagree with Jeff is that, yes, he's been doing this for the better part of two decades in La Liga, the Champions League, national teams, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to say, but not at this rate where he plays half the time and his counterparts mm. have less numbers than him. And we could say, and I know people take this personally, uh, this is why they don't want to vote for Messi for MVP. He's not played half the games. How can you vote for him? doesn't show value. So you would rather him play more games mm -hmm. and have less production to demonstrate his value when he can do it in half the time. That's how good he is. And it, part of that is the indictment on the Major League Soccer player, is the indictment of where he is today. Because he wasn't doing this, with all due respect, at PSG. He wasn't doing that to this rate, that extent, his latter years in Barcelona. So it's a little bit of both. It's that Messi is Messi, and he's been doing this forever, and he's still, for my money, the greatest player to ever play the game, and that Major League Soccer defenders aren't necessarily mm. on par with the rest of the world. Herc, you know what's interesting here is that this week it's not just MLS, right? We have the recent World Cup qualifier against Bolivia, the five goal contributions, three goals and two assists. You know, we can, we can think about what Messi was 2009 through 2012, those incredible, you know, video game stat type of seasons. Um, but he's still doing it at, at such a high level. Again, not just in Major League Soccer. How far off his best do you think he is even at 37 years old, Hurt? Uh, he's far off because of what we've seen from him, the level that we've seen, right? Uh, it, he's a victim of his own standards. That's how good Messi is. He's uh, been godlike on the field at times. Um, I do feel Lionel Scaloni and Tata Martino, uh, Argentina, Inter Miami, have put Messi into situations where he doesn't need to exert more energy than he would normally need elsewhere. He does enough and the things that he's good at to mm. help the team, and they end up working. I think it's a perfect storm on both sides. Look at the World Cup run. Julian Alvarez is right next to him. It's a guy who does a lot of running for him. That midfield, very two, uh, good two-way players um, that, that, that just work their socks off for Messi. They're all there for him. Inter Miami, the players they surrounded him with. Uh, the familiarity that you have on the left-hand side with Jordi Alba, up top with Luis Suarez, Busquets in the midfield. It's second nature to Messi. He's really in two situations right now that are cater-made for him. Most players around the world don't have that at club or country, let alone <clears throat> both together. So uh, how far is he from his best? I think he's far off because of what he's shown us. You, you mentioned the 2012 numbers of 90-something goals and what he's done before. And we can go back to 2022 in the World Cup play. Messi's a, a player like I've never seen, but to think that he's anywhere near uh, where he was at his peak is foolish, and that's okay. Father time is undefeated, and it happens to everybody, but Messi, uh, still at this age, 37 years of age, he, he's killing defenders. All right, so um, Inter-Miami now has the supporter shield. They got the points record, and you know what else they got? They got an invite to the FIFA Club World Cup in 2025. Let's hear exactly how it went down with Gianni Infantino. Many congratulations for winning the Supporter Shields. And on top, with the record of points of the Major League Soccer, congratulations. You are the best team of the season in America. Second, based on this outstanding performance of this year, you deserve to be and you will be qualified for the FIFA Club World Cup 2025 as the host team of the FIFA Club World Cup 2025 you will have the honor of opening the tournament hosting the opening game here in Miami at the Hard Rock Stadium in front of 65,000 people and tens of millions at home all right, Jeff, a lot of people are upset with Inter-Miami getting this spot. Uh, what do you make of it? Is anyone really surprised? I mean, th this is FIFA's show. I mean, this, this is Gian Infantino's baby, this, this tournament, this Club World Cup. And so, you know, they want to, to have as much star power as they can. And what gives you more star power than having Lionel Messi playing in the, in the inaugural game? Um, certainly, I think it would have added more credibility to the, to the competition, if all of the spots, you know, the criteria for, for qualifying for the tournament have been laid out beforehand. But, I mean, 
on the one hand, it's disappointing, but on the other hand, it's not a surprise because, I mean, this, this is the way it was headed the entire time. I mean, if you want to say that Inter Miami is the best team in America, well, I guess it depends on your definition of America because mm. I think there's some teams in, in, in Liga MX that, that might disagree. But uh, certainly the Club World Cup, it, it needs its star power. It needs its cachet. And this is a way, a way to achieve it. Um, but I'd say for the next iteration, they, they've got to have a situation where the criteria are spelled out clearly on how teams qualify. Yeah, imagine if you're in one of these other teams, Herc, right? You didn't you didn't know that the supporter shield that we dog all the time on this show might come with a ticket to the FIFA Club uh, World Cup. That doesn't seem very fair. Inter Miami, by the way, uh, joining a bunch of Liga Mekis teams uh, in this tournament. Uh, Pachuca, Leon, Monterrey, and then of course, Herc, Seattle Sounders will also be in it next year. Uh you know, I'm curious. Why, why don't they make it known what the requisites are? What, what you know, what you need to win or achieve to qualify? Why wouldn't they make that known? I, I, I'm dumbfounded by that. Could it be because then you leave it up to chance that Inter Miami doesn't meet those standards and doesn't qualify? Then you don't have Messi in a tournament that you've not packaged for TV rights yet, and that it's easier to sell TV rights with Messi when a player like Messi is involved. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's what it's about here. It's smart business for them. I don't like it. Uh, they try to make us out for fools. Uh, I've got no issue with them just saying, hey, Inter Miami's going because we want Messi there. I would have been like, you know what? This is par for the course for FIFA. But don't make things up as you go and then say you qualified for it. I'm curious as to why nobody is buying this product. Mm. Because it wasn't too long ago we heard that a certain company out there purchased the rights and then phew, nothing. So why can't you sell this? Listen, I played in this club world. The clubs Cup. don't want it and the players don't want it, Herc. I think that's probably a reason they can't sell it. I don't think the television networks care about that. Mm. If they think it's profitable, they're going to buy it, Seb. You know how this business works. I've played in this World Cup, this club world cup. Mine was 2010. Uh, I was with Pachuca. Uh, we went, represented CONCACAF. Uh, it was in Abu Dhabi. I must have played in front of 100 people. Hmm. 100 people. If that. If that. And, and maybe most of them were working at the stadium. Uh, this tournament has lost the luster it once had. Uh, maybe the first one. Manchester United, you know, uh, playing in it, winning it. That's the last time... I can think of a tournament actually meaning something. So the fact that right now, when it's an expanded tournament, you've got all these great teams coming to the United States and you can't find a proper buyer, that to me is worrisome. Mm. And, and, and I, again, I repeat, I don't care if you're in it for the money because I understand that, you understand that, Jeff understands that nobody would say, gee, I wonder why they will want Messi, but just be straight yeah. with everybody. Don't take them for fools. Yeah. Feels like the uh, FIFA and the Club World Cup need Messi a lot more than Messi and Inter Miami uh, need that tournament. Messi does need some help sometimes, though, in a few things here and there. When it comes to moving merch, apparently, specifically, and I would not have guessed this, uh, shoes. Because we have a Lionel Messi and Bad Bunny shoe collab, courtesy uh, of Adidas. You're seeing it here, both sneakers and cleats. Uh, Herc, you're always the one that gets the care packages here. Do you have these yet or what? I'm still waiting. Uh -huh. I'm still waiting, my friends and Adidas. Those are dripping. San Benito. You would, you would wear the these, really, Herc? You would wear those on a field? I don't wear cleats anywhere these days. Yeah. But they're not just cleats or some shoes. Send mm -hmm. them my way. Now, the, I, I, might wear the, I might wear the sambas or whatever we're calling them. Um, I don't know that I would wear the cleats, man. You got to be like a really, really good player to wear the cleats. I don't think I'm a... No, you don't, man. Level. What year did to you wear, play? To wear brown cleats with light blue highlights, you don't have to be a good Seth. player. You're going to look like a clown if you're bad. Seb, how old are you? Old man Younger yelling at you. the cloud. Younger than Kid, you. Kids wear all types of colors. What Younger are you talking you. about, man? Wants his They're gazelles, black. apparently, not uh, not Sambas. Jeff, you're a big Bad Bunny guy. These going to be in your uh, wardrobe anytime soon? <laughs> Somebody tells me I'm not in Bad Bunny's target demographic here. But uh, I'm going to go out on a limb there. But if they, if they want to send them my way, <laughs> I'm more than willing. There you go. More of a Bugs Bunny guy than a uh, Bad Bunny guy, Jeff Carlisle, there, as we take a look at the uh, <laughs> latest Adidas collab. We're definitely giving this a uh, drip in, because Herc says he uh, wants some uh, sent to the ESPN Connecticut Studios. I was going to say LA Studios.